Hello again and welcome back to another pre-built review. Today we will have a look at this little tiny PC, the Lenovo Idea Center Gaming 5. This will be again a slightly different kind of review compared to the average unboxing video that you can find here on YouTube for the Idea Center Gaming 5. I decided to buy this PC and make a video about it so that uh, whoever is thinking of buying it can check beforehand what will you get for your money or if you already bought it what upgrade path do you have for this. In the video I will focus mainly on the internals, disassembly and PC parts quality. We will check out what parts is Lenovo using for this one and how good is the overall build quality of the PC. Also, if you are interested to expand the storage, there's a section illustrating how to add a hard drive to the build. Ok, let's start with one minute of unboxing and check out what is included in the retail package. The PC is decently packed protected by somewhat good quality packing foam. The packaging itself, it is simple and efficient. Alongside the PC, there are another two boxes inside. One contains a power cable and a mouse, and the other one is the keyboard. The included peripherals, keyboard and mouse are nothing to write home about, so don't expect too much. But they are somewhat usable in my opinion, and at least they are not total e-waste. The front I.O. is pretty simplistic, there's only one button available, the power button. There are two USB 3.2 and one USB Type-C port, a combo jack for headsets and mic, and a card reader. On the side panel, there are some perforated vents for increased airflow. Moving to the back of the PC, we can see that there are two video output ports included in the motherboard I.O. plate. A VGA out and an HDMI 1.4 port, capable of high refresh rate. This is not a surprise because we are dealing here with a capable APU and I'm talking about the Ryzen 5 5600G. Also we have four more USB 2.0, a gigabit LAN and a 3.5mm audio jack. There is no switch for the power supply. Ok, let's open up this little bad boy. Lenovo made this pretty easy as there are only two screws for the left side panel. As for the right panel, unfortunately this is not accessible as it is riveted to the chassis and would imply to drill this out. Typical for the idea center, the layout is unfortunately very OEM with the HDD and SSD mounting panel blocking the access to the components but uh, fortunately this tray or panel is removable and we can get rid of it. We start by taking off the front panel. We need to pull on the three plastic latches and gently pull aside the front panel. Be careful because there's a cable attached to it. With the front panel off, we are moving to the front of the PC. There's one more latch that we need to pull, this metal one. After this, the whole panel will pivot to the side and we can take it right off. With this panel off, we have now unrestricted access to the components. I'll go through now all the parts that we have in this PC, starting with the GPU. As you can see, this idea center came with a GTX 1660 Super. A mid-range GPU initially launched in November 2019 and brought back to life this year by Nvidia because of the GPU shortages. This has a single fan cooler and I guess they choose this based on the space constraints, but for sure you can squeeze in a dual fan GPU here. 
The rest of the specs of the GPU are pretty standard. 6GB GDDR6 and 192-bit memory bus. I think this will still offer a pleasant gaming experience at 1080p on low or medium settings in most of the modern games. For those who want to use this PC without a dedicated GPU, this is 100% possible and if you're not a gamer, you can sell the discrete GPU and get back as much as 50 to 60% on your purchase as the GTX 1660 Super goes for 450 to 500 euros. But I digress, let's get back to the PC. Let's move on now to the RAM. As you can see, there are only two slots available. There are traces and contacts for two more, but it seems that Lenovo decided to limit the memory to two slots. An unfortunate thing is the fact that in this configuration, they decided to go with only one RAM stick. This is an issue because the memory will work in single channel, reducing the overall performance of the PC by 15 to 20%. But there's a positive side to this. Because we have here a 16 gigs DDR4 stick, running at 3200 MHz, made by Micron, which is decent in my opinion, and if you're willing to spend another 50 bucks or so, you can buy another similar stick, so you will end up with 32 gigs running in dual channel. Worst case, you can try to switch this with someone for 2 by 8 gig sticks, without any or little additional cost. Moving now to the storage, this PC came with only one storage device, this being an SSD. You can find it on the bottom right of the motherboard, pointing downwards. To free it, you only have to push down on the plastic black pin. It's good to see that the Lenovo included a very nice heatsink for the SSD, and I think this is the only pre-built PC I ever encountered so far with one of these. Underneath the heatsink, we can find an 1TB NVMe PCIe Gen3 SSD from SK Hynix, which will give us a lot of performance. I'm really happy with this one. Next, we'll have a look at the CPU and the CPU cooler used for this build. To take off the CPU cooler, we have to unscrew these four screws. Take your time and do this in small steps. I see that Lenovo is using the same Intel cooler and mounting mechanism used in the Legion 5 PC. But this time, I have the feeling that this will cool the CPU properly. I am using a bit of isopropylic alcohol to clean up the thermal paste and we'll have a look at the CPU. At the heart of this PC, we have an AMD Ryzen 5 5600G, which is part of the latest family of CPU released by AMD this year. This is a 6-core, 12-thread CPU with integrated Vega 7 graphics. It has a 3.9 GHz base clock and a 4.4 boot clock. Okay. With everything out of the way, we can have a look now at the rest of the case and the motherboard. As at this point there's nothing much that we can take off of it anymore. I have to mention that with the case there are two 18mm fans included. One for exhaust and one for intake. Which are creating some sort of an airflow. But let's have a look at the power connection that this tiny PSU is offering and see if we have the support to upgrade anything on this PC. You probably saw me earlier unplugging the 4-pin CPU power connector which is pretty standard so far. Unfortunately, that's the only standard connector used because the motherboard is powered through a 10-pin header instead of the normal 24-pin connector. 
there is a SATA power connector, but this is not coming directly from the power supply, but through a connection from the motherboard. There is a 6 plus 2 pin VGA connection available, which will power probably a GPU up to an RTX 3060 Ti or an AMD RX 6600X. And that's about it, no other power connection available unfortunately. While I put everything back together and prepare the PC for a series of tests, I will try to shed some light on what upgrade options this PC really offers. I will start with the PSU and, to put things into perspective, the Idea Center Gaming 5 series comes with three power supply options, 280 watts, 210 watts and 260 watts, all in SFX format. So this means that we won't be able to change the PSU to a normal ATX power supply. In this PC, we have the 310 watts SFX PSU with an 80 plus platinum efficiency rating, which offers enough juice to properly power this tiny PC in the current configuration. With this PSU, you will be able to upgrade either the CPU to a Ryzen 7 or the GPU to an 3060 Ti or an RX 6600 XT but not both, because simply there's not enough power. You can try and upgrade the PSU, but a decent 600 watts plus SFX unit will cost you somewhere north of 150 euros, and in my opinion, that's way too much. We also discussed about the RAM a bit earlier, and with a marginal 50 bucks investment, you can end up with 32 gigs, which I think is more than enough for this PC. Worst case, just try and put in 2x8 gig sticks for dual channel. Another limiting factor for an upgrade is the case itself and the motherboard, which are more or less married together, because you cannot easily replace the motherboard inside a case due to construction and power connectors, and also you cannot move the motherboard in a new case as it is an odd OEM format and will not fit especially due to the front I.O. which uh, protrudes out of the motherboard. But to end on a positive note, one thing that you can upgrade is the storage, because alongside the included NVMe SSD you can add two more hard drive or SSD on this PC. One SATA power cable is already connected to the motherboard and there's one SATA data cable included. If you need more details about how to connect an SSD or HDD, please watch till the end of the video as I am installing a an 4TB hard drive to the PC.
In order to add the extra hard drive or an SATA SSD, we need to put aside the SATA cable and the power cable. On this side tray, there are two slots, one for a 2.5 inch hard drive or SSD on the outside and one 3.5 inch hard drive slot on the inside. Depending on of, uh, what you want to install, you can use either of them. I will install as a demonstration a 3.5 inch hard drive. After installing it to the proper place, just connect the two cables and that should take care of it. As always, thank you for your time, stay safe and see you in the next one.